What's up guys, I'm Joel Dodge. Welcome back to the channel. Man, I really enjoyed making that intro and of course I used impulse responses for all the electric guitar parts. The IR loader has very quickly become probably my favorite new feature that Bias FX2 has just because it impacts your tone in such a like tangible way, you know. Um, but before we get into anything else about impulse responses, I wanted to say a few things. So guys, the first thing is that I've become an Amazon affiliate. And what that means is that I can put links in the description of my videos that you can click to see those products. And if you buy the products in the links, it gives me a small commission at no charge to you. And this is really cool because, well, first off, I don't make any money off of this channel. And this is a cool way that you can help support me without it costing you anything. Um, and the other thing is it just makes it that much easier for me to recommend products that I use and that I believe in. With this, something that I'm going to begin to do in all my videos from here on out is have links of products that I use. So I'm going to have a section that's my home studio stuff, and then I'm going to have a section for specifically for my guitar gear and equipment that I use. Definitely go take a look at the Amazon affiliate links and see if there's anything you're interested in pick up. Um, I did try to include some cheaper things like picks and stuff like that. So guys, the second thing I wanna say is please subscribe if, especially if you've been watching some of my other videos in the past. And the reason I say this is that when I look at my channel analytics, it says that 90% of the people watching my channel, it's actually over 90% of the people haven't subscribed. And just to put that in perspective, if even half of those people subscribed, I would be well over a thousand subscribers at this point. Please do that if you haven't. I, <laughs> Up until this point, I've always felt kind of weird asking for subscribers, but that is something I'm gonna start doing in more of my videos from here on out. The next thing I want to do is recommend some free impulse responses I've found. And it was actually harder than you might think to find free impulse responses <laughs> that I would feel comfortable recommending. A lot of the websites I was finding, it just seems like I just wasn't willing to download anything from them. It just seemed like it'd probably crash my computer. Um, but I feel comfortable recommending these two because they're just very professional setup websites and I've downloaded them these with no problems and of course both the ones i recommend will be down linked down below the first one is from wilkeson audio and actually it was a, a subscriber that showed this to me um ed b so thank you so much for showing me this website i actually wouldn't have found it if you didn't show it to me this has a huge variety of impulse responses um and they're free of course, if there's anything on their website that you like that's paid, go ahead and pick that up too. They sell mic mounts and stuff like that. The other one that I found is a YouTuber that I follow. His name is Rhett Scholl. Wouldn't be surprised if a lot of guys, you guys follow him too. And most of his impulse responses, you actually have to buy, but he has a demo pack that has like, I think it has four impulse responses in it. And it's basically one impulse response from each of his main packs. His have been my favorite free ones for like a clean to overdriven kind of sounds. But definitely go check that stuff out and start using some impulse responses. Your tone is going to be significantly better because of it. The next thing I want to do is a, I just wanted to jump into Bias FX2 and I'm going to do a quick comparison of an impulse response versus a cab simulation. And then the other thing is just kind of show you how to download impulse responses. So let's get into that. So this is the setup and I'm gonna switch out that cab for an impulse response in a second here. So we're just gonna play around. So that's, that's how this cab sounds with the setup, which is a little bit of reverb. And I'm going to replace the cab with an impulse response of what's supposed to be the same, um, the same cabinet, not there, in the IR. Um, 
which th is this one, something that I typically do with almost all the impulse responses I use is turn up this uh, low pass filter. It just cuts some of the highs out. I think personally, I feel like they almost always have too many highs in them. So anyway, let me mess around with this to kind of give you a feel for this. Yeah, so I'm going to play a few of those back to back so you can kind of hear the difference between them. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments down below. So, so for those of you who don't know what an impulse response is, I've only come to understand and know about them over the past couple weeks. And I just want to try to give you an explanation. What they do to make an impulse response is they take a little, um, a little clip of white noise and they send it through a guitar cabinet and have that guitar cabinet mic'd as if they were going to record electric guitar. Instead of recording an electric guitar signal, they just record the little snippet of white noise. And what it allows something like the IR loader to do is to take that white noise, put it in there, and basically make that IR loader respond to all noise, all frequencies the same way as that cabinet would. I hope the way I explained it made sense just now. I just kind of got tired of like looking on YouTube and everybody being like, it's a snapshot of a cab in a microphone. It just, that got so annoying to me. So that's a little bit more of a technical explanation of what it is. So guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't, but as always, die empty. I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>